Welcome back to the Westmoreland Sports Network for our Recruiting Thursday feature, brought to you by Sendel Volkswagen in Greensburg. We would love to meet you. Jack Ridenauer here with you, and today we are joined by Franklin Regional basketball player and recent Seton Hill basketball commit, Finn Hutchison. Finn, first off, thanks so much for joining us today. Congrats on the commitment. I'm sure very exciting for you. How does it feel to have this done out the way and can enjoy that last month or so of, of senior year? It feels absolutely amazing. Uh, just like a weight has just been lifted off my shoulders completely. And you know, now I can just you know finish out the school, finish my classes, get good grades, and just enjoy hanging out with friends and work on getting ready for the season. Absolutely, man. Yeah, before you know it, you'll be back on the hardwood. I mean, it's kind of like in a blink of an eye. It's back to the basketball season. But what went into the decision to stay local, go to Seton Hill? Just what drew you to the school and the program? Honestly, I was there for a few camps uh, over the past two years with the new coach, uh, Coach Wilkins, and then Coach Stokes as his assistant. And I just felt whenever I went there, the morale like around the team and like the team chemistry, it just was literally just who I am as a person. Like I'm an outgoing kid. You know, I love – I love talking. I could talk to talk to a broken wall, you know, talk to a wall, whatever. And, uh, you know, it just it just fit me, honestly. And I just felt at home with those guys and like with the coaches. And then they told me, like, you know, we'll get in touch again with you your senior year. And, you know, things just kind of fell into place. What was this recruiting process like for you as a whole? I mean, what was it just kind of dealing with? You know, you've got all sorts of things. You have a wide range of stuff, right? I mean, I'm sure you go back, you know, when you're younger, you have COVID and then you're kind of yeah. fighting your way through that. You've got showcases, yeah. AAU. So what was this whole thing like for you? Honestly, the whole the whole journey was quite interesting. Um, my freshman year, I played just freshman basketball. I didn't play JV. I did not play varsity. And then uh, my 10th grade year, I came around and a, our coach Reed came in and he played me as the six man, basically as the shooter on our team on varsity. So I never really played JV. So I like, go into that game. My first game was against Olsh. Uh, they were like the, you know, undefeated 40, 40 and some champs. And you know, I had like 16, 17 points. I believe my first varsity game ever. And it was kind of a surreal experience, but like, it, it was good knowing like I could play with these guys and like the AAU and showcase process throughout all the way through 10th, you know, through 12th grade was I played with BSA with like Cooper and Colin and uh, some of the other guys with Coach Scorpion, actually, our old coach, we played under him. And we went to just basic BSA tournaments, but always got, the be like, got better as a team. And our chemistry was unreal because we were together all year long. And then uh, last year, I've stepped away from that a little bit. And I went to – I still played with them on some weekends, but I played in more big shots tournaments with my team up in Johnstown, run through uh, the greater Johnstown guys. Like uh, His name's Ryan Durham and then my coach X. He's my guy. And uh, they, he actually roomed with Scorp, uh, Coach Durham, at Johnstown when they went to college. So they got in touch with like, he got in touch with him. He's like, hey, like my guy Finn, like he's looking to get out there a little more, get his name out there, you know, play some bigger tournaments. And I, I traveled with them. We went to Virginia Beach. We went to the hoop groups, some hoop group stuff. And just, you know, all around, it, it really helped me out. Like going to hoop group, I got a bunch of uh, Division three looks like through – like Juniata and Grove City were my two. I really got a hoop group. And when I got those, it kind of solidified like, okay, like these guys believe in me. Like I can, I think I can do college basketball. And then obviously this last senior year with uh, our, our great team we had with, you know, the Whippeal run and the, and the state championship run, it just kind of, you know, it just kind of flourished. And I did, you know, like here and there, I did some like team camps, like, like some uh, like individual camps. Like I said, I went to the Seton Hill camp. I went to a few other like division two, II, division three camps, but um, it was mainly through like hoop group and then definitely this season, my senior year. Hoop group and big shots, definitely two very important for people out there that don't know what they are. And if you're a young basketball player, you yeah. need to look into it. Uh, as a former basketball player myself, I went through hoop group. We went to Albright college, uh, yeah. did all those, all those camps, <laughs> uh, big shot stuff every weekend. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very important. And, and my next question to you is, you know, you mentioned playing with your high school teammates in AAU. Yeah. I mean, that's such a unique thing, right? Uh, being able to yeah. have that chemistry throughout the year. So, I mean, I'm sure the transition was seamless for you guys going from AAU to, to high school, right? Yeah, we, you know, we, we always played like on the weekends together. Like no matter what, so like it'd be BSA, it could be like our dads used to coach us when we were younger. You know, we'd travel around, and uh, literally it was just like you know we practice as a team, and then the weekend we do the play. Like during the summer, we do like summer workouts Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever it was, and then just you know we go we'd be like hey, 
and we carpooling, you know, Friday night, we carpooling to Monroeville or carpooling to wherever it is, you know, go up to Cannon Mac for a while. That sucked. But, uh, but, uh you know, it, it was, it was great, honestly, just playing. And then we just literally just get right back into it Tuesday, Thursday, and then sometimes AAU practice Wednesdays. And it was literally like we were just playing AAU this entire year, to be honest, like nothing, nothing crazy. We were just one team. Yeah, the uh, memories that you make doing AAU basketball la- last a lifetime. They really do. Yeah. Uh, I sit and think about it sometimes myself. So uh, it's great that you got to enjoy that with your high school teammates as well. You know, oh. kind of a, a two birds and one stone kind of thing. So Ooh. I want to get into last year, though, a little bit because okay. it was a season that obviously did not, you know, finish out the way you guys obviously wanted it to. Lots of injuries, things went sideways, oh. but you kind of stole the show, right? I mean, you stepped in with. Cooper Rankin and Cam Rao both down. How much growth did you feel in yourself as a player, but also as a leader during that season? I, I honestly say I, I grew a great deal. I mean, I would I would say honestly I'm more known as I was more known as a shooter at the time, and I still kind of am. But I definitely I polish my game by having to do other things through them being out. And like I'm a very vocal person, like I said, so. That the vocal part of that wasn't too hard for me, especially like under the senior guys like Jake Kimmick and like Max Levin, you know, them leaving. Like they, they were both very vocal guys and like they always trusted me too. So like I would be, you know, I was vocal at practice. I was vocal during the games. I was vocal in the locker room, always encouraging the younger guys. And just, you know, honestly, just them being out, it gets sucked. I wanted, I wanted them there. I, I really did because I wanted to win. I know them too being that would definitely make our chances 100 times better. And we showed that this year. But them being out really made me step up as a player and a person. And uh, I think it honestly helped me in the long run by going into that summer, my AAU season, like I played up in Johnstown. And you know, I, was, like, I was playing a hoop group with, with some guys from Johnstown, and I was just doing my thing. And I'm, I was doing all types of things, like coming off the bounce, shooting pull-ups and getting to the rim, and while also shooting my threes. So honestly, it just it helped a lot. And on top of that, uh, another unique aspect is that you've got such a young coach in Jesse Reed that – is not yeah. far removed from playing. I'm sure he probably yeah. played with you sometimes in practice. Yeah. How much did you learn from him during your time with him? But also just what was that experience like being coached by somebody that had such a high pedigree as a player, especially around here too? Right. I'll keep some of our, I'll keep our stories under on, on the hidden of him playing with us during open gyms and stuff. But yeah, he still got it. I'll tell you that. But, uh, you know, playing under him, he, you know, he, like he knows the game. So like at the end of the day, like he knows, he sees things from a player and a coach's perspective. So like he can bring it down sometimes and realize like emotions are going to get high. Emotions are going to get serious. Like we're going to flare. But at the end of the day, like he knows what he's talking about. Like he played high level basketball. He, he did it all. He went overseas. Like he's, he's, he's tough. He's really tough. So like I trust him with, you know, my skill set. Like whenever we'd be doing like skill development and stuff, like he would put me in like, it was me and like the small group guys. We'd call ourselves the old heads actually. And uh, we like we'd be in a group and he would put us in like running certain drills, like for pull ups or whatever it is for that upcoming game for to put us in our best situation to do good. So, you know, being under him was absolutely great. And, you know, he's he's my guy. I'll be honest, like him and I are very similar in many ways. Like we you know we both love Drake, both love golf, but both love a lot of the same things. And we're both very similar. So I him and I got along very, very well. And I feel like in a way you got to kind of grow with him, you know, as he grew as a coach, you know, you both kind of grow it. You grow as a player. He grows as a coach and, you know, everybody is better for it in in the long run. But coming into this year, obviously coming out of the season you guys had a year ago, I'm sure the mindset was very different. And, And especially with a fully healthy squad, it was a completely different, you know, kind of approach. What was that mindset and just that kind of outlook that you guys had heading into the year? I think it was just honestly simply win. Like we... We knew the first, you know, through two years, my 10th grade year, we probably should have made the playoffs. Then my 11th grade year, we definitely should have made the playoffs and, you know, made a run. So this senior year, we were, we were dead set. Uh, the dads who used to coach us, Cooper's dad, Colin's dad, and my dad, they all coached us. But Cooper and Colin's dad actually decided to take us out to dinner. And we went to uh, – I forget exactly what it was called, to be honest with you. We saw Jerome Bendis, though. That was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> some nice steakhouse downtown. And it was literally just a, like, this is a business. Like, it's time. Like, let's go. Like, you guys are made for this. Like, we're making a whip you run. We're making a state run. And people always said, like, oh, they counted us out. They didn't think we were going to be there. Like, for us, like, we knew we were going to be there, to be totally honest with you. We, we knew we had it. And we were, we were ready for the championship run. 
Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's you know you you said you said it way better than I would have. That's for sure. You guys definitely uh, put your money where your mouth is, without question. Yeah. And I want to go into the. We'll start with the Whitfield Championship run. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, falling short to Moon. Obviously, again, not the outcome that you want, but you yeah. guys getting there. Such an incredible run. What during that tournament was clicking for your team? Do you feel? Uh, honestly, I just think it was. It, we we've been like I felt like we've been there. It's it's hard to explain. Like we've never been to the Whitfield Championship. We've never been in the playoffs to, to begin with. But our team, like it just felt like we were there. Like we've been there before from you know, playing together for so long. It was just like, it's just not our game. We're gonna go out here and we're gonna we're gonna talk the talk. We're gonna walk the walk and we're gonna handle business and move on. Like literally the entire time we would win our uh, first game, our first Whitfield playoff game was against uh, Mars. We literally won that game and we said, I forget what it was, four more. We won the next game, three more, two more. But we beat uh, Shaler with like one more. Let's go. Like, and we knew we, we, we could do it. Like we, the whole time we said four more, three more. We did not ever celebrate the one like really that hard at all. We'd win. Okay, cool. Let's go. Let's move on. And it's a great attitude to have because, like you said, kind of that business approach. You're not messing around. You know, you're you're yeah. coming for a, an objective, and you're going to fulfill that. What was that experience like for you and your team playing in such a huge arena like the Peterson Event Center, and you know, just experiencing something like that? Oh, I've actually told many people this. I um, I personally did not really digest like what really happened at the game because, like, uh, that's that's the downside of going into it with such a business mindset where. I went into it and I was, I was so locked in and determined thinking like, we are going to beat them. There was no doubt in my mind. We were going to win this game. Like I went out on the court, like that was the most fans we've ever had. They had a packed student section. All the seats in the lower bowl were full. Like it was, it was absolutely packed. I see now from watching it back, but like in the time, like I was literally just like locked in, like mad. I was just like mad kind of. And, and I'll, and I'll say that's definitely the biggest thing that, I took and I changed going into the state where I was like, okay, like I didn't like, yeah, we lost. I was very upset. We lost the Whitfield, but like, I didn't, I didn't embrace the moment and enjoy basketball in that moment. Like this is the coolest moment ever. Like only a certain amount of teams ever get to do this, you know? And I never, I didn't sit there and like, man, this is awesome. Like, this is sweet. Like I, I was just locked in. So like when I went in the state game, I loved it. I had so much fun. Like I was smiling Win or lose, I knew it was over, to be honest. Like, win or lose, your season's done. So why not enjoy the moment and just let it happen? And that's that's kind of what I did. And I kind of wish I did that for the Whippy. That's my biggest regret for the Whippy, is not embracing the moment. Well, I think, you know, as they say, hindsight's twenty twenty, And in a moment yeah. <laughs> like that, you know, you, like you said, you're locked in. You've got a goal yeah. and, you, you, you know, you've reached the mountaintop. And you're staring mm -hmm. down at your other opponent. It's kind of like, yeah, let's, you know, let's roll this ball out and see what happens. So, yeah. you know, I, I think that at the end of the day, and, it, you know, as cliche as it sounds, just be happy that it happened and, you know, not yeah. that it ever did happen, right? Yeah. Um, but something that was very interesting during, and I'm glad that you mentioned the state playoff run, because your first game, if I'm not mistaken, was at home at Franklin Regional. Yeah. So got to do that in front of your home crowd. What was that like? I mean, you go from playing at Peterson events <laughs> and then you're in a state playoff game in front of a home crowd. So, I mean, you guys probably felt like the Beatles for like a week and a half. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was actually really, really cool. Like, you know, going out, can't go anywhere. Like you literally, you go anywhere and somebody's man, like great job. Like you guys, you got this. Like you guys are awesome. Like it was one of the coolest feelings ever. Like you're like a celebrity in a sense. And like, that sounds probably bad to say, but like, <laughs> It, it was so cool, like, just to go anywhere and just people like, man, you're doing great. Like, you knew who they are. And then for me personally with the musical, like, I was in the musical West Side Story, um, like, that first game back, like, one, morale was kind of low. Like, you know, we just lost the Whipple. And, like, we had a team. We had a senior ordinated practice to, like, get us back into it. Coach Reed let us do that, and that was a great idea. But, you know, letting us get – like, we just had, like, a fun practice, and everybody was back, and then we got back to work. And just, you know, that first home playoff game against Warwick, like I, I played pretty I played pretty well, but knowing like, man, this could be my last game ever if I if we lose. And I would still have to go to the musical was killing me. I couldn't It was it was absolutely special to just go out on a win on my senior season. And it was a much better turnout than we thought it was gonna be due to a five PM game. Yeah, there were you know, a ton of people behind us. Absolutely, and they yeah. moved it up and now 
I'm in the musical, so I gotta. Oh go. Oh my gosh, I you better go, there. man. I'm like, no, I got some time. Do I gotta get you warmed up or anything? What are you doing in the musical? Like, I'm, I'm a background. I'm a singer. Okay. And dancer, you know. But uh, <laughs> well, you're still singing and dancing, so yeah. I guess you're already warmed Co up. You're Coach has called me Troy Bolton the entire week. Zach <laughs> Efron, all all types of different your, stuff. Your voice is gone. I better tell you to stop. Like you I'm shouldn't be talking little, like, anymore. Los Angeles, whatever. Yeah, you call get some tea or I'm something. I was like, man, if I if we lose and I gotta go to the musical, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. But uh, it was it was awesome. Yeah, that would be pretty hard to like remember your lines and you're thinking about, oh, you know, third quarter, like a free throw or whatever. Like that would be really so awful. Uh, how was the play? It was it was super fun. I mean, like all the all the people in the play, like Mr. Wolfgang, he's the leader of the play. <laughs> uh, they they absolutely had my back the entire way, which was super cool. Like I missed practice for basketball. And then like during the Warwick game, the first playoff game, like I'm shooting a free throw. I make it. I turn around. And I run back on defense, and I see in the hallway like all the cast people are dressed up in like their in their uniform and like what they gotta wear in the play, and they're all like, "Yeah, yeah, Phil, like what? Like go get ready, man!" Like, <laughs> but like it, it was it was super super cool, and the play was awesome. So I'm super glad I did it. Yeah, uh, and not to mention, you know, shows the the versatility you have as an individual. Being well versed and being well rounded right. is always such an important thing to have. But we'll go back into the state tournament because you guys get revenge. Yeah. You beat you beat yeah. Moon. And you take oh, them was, down. What was that uh, like? I mean, talk a little bit about that that sweet taste of revenge. That was honestly that was my that was like my championship, like in the championship. Like it was I was I was ecstatic. Like I was I, I knew I I think my personal belief is we did not play very well in the Whitfield game. And people can say what they want, but that's what I think. And I think, you know, we all went to that game, like, hey, we're gonna get them back. Like this is our get back. This is us. Like we got this. And I think we definitely proved it to them. Elijah did get like, – he got hurt throughout the game. But, you know, the score we still won by like 17 or something like that. And um, I, it, it was absolutely awesome. People were throwing Hershey kisses on the court and uh, Hershey's chocolate. You know, there's a picture of me. I jumped in the student section with all, with all our friends like in the locker room after. It was just surreal. And I, that was probably the best moment, one of the best moments of the year. When did this – historic run and kind of maybe realizing what you guys did this year when did that set in for you and your teammates if if it has at all yet for for me it kind of sat in honestly right whenever I started talking to like the right before honestly right after the moon game if I'm being totally honest with you like every I see articles everywhere um like my one of my best friends is his name is Mike Recker and his his uncle is the one who passed away and uh we have the tournament for him but he's actually one of my really good friends. And like, I went to his grandma, ha grandma's house and I saw her and she was like, cause I was her son on the team and they went to the state and that's the last time they're in the state. And like, she was telling me these stories and stuff. And it was just like, it, it just kind of all set in. I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. Like we are doing something that hasn't been done in, in so long that like this, the school, the school was going crazy. Like we had, a, we were leaving the school and we had uh, the hallways were lined with the kids and, and teachers and uh, administration, like you go to Hershey, you think, oh, there's not gonna be that many people there. Like, no, like the, <laughs> they canceled the school board meeting. You know, everybody from Murraysville was coming. We had a student bus come out, like, and that it kind of set in for me then. And then when the season officially ended, like probably a week ago, you know, like for me a week ago, it really it it fully settled, and I was just like, man, that was that was really really cool. What do you think you'll remember most about that run to the state tournament? And and you know, obviously, again coming up short but still just experiencing that going through that i mean not many players can even say that a they made the playoffs b they made the state playoffs and c mm -hmm. that they even got to the state finals so i mean just yeah. what are you going to remember about this run the most honestly i think just making the last run with my senior guys and you know just kind of i don't even know honestly the senior guy like being with the senior guys and just i'll tell i'll tell you what says the the commitment it takes is is unreal i mean from not making the playoffs for two years in a row and then making a huge whip you'll run playing every we played every game possible and every practice possible like that last you know few weeks it is a grind like it is it's like you gotta lock in like you it is it's tough like oh like you're tired you know you just played a game doesn't matter like we have practice like we gotta go hard again so the grind was definitely unreal but there were so many laughs along the way where it, it was so worth it and i wouldn't trade it for the world Obviously, a big congrats to you. And uh, before we let you run, I want to hear from you, kind of in a way, trying summing this all up. 
what do you hope your legacy is when you officially graduate, walk, walk across the stage at, at Franklin Regional, and you know you look back five, ten, fifteen years down the road, and you say, "Wow, you know, I was a part of something you know bigger than myself." I think I wanted to be honestly just be remembered as some not just basketball, but for all my other facets that I do in school. Like I'm, you know, I run the Helping Homebound Heroes Club. I'm involved in Young Life, like the play, and obviously the state basketball run. It, you know, it just, I, I don't want to be known as just a basketball player. I'd be loved to be known as something greater than that and someone who's better at the school in so many different ways. But, you know, the basketball part, I think just our team knowing that we did something special and like these younger guys coming up are like, man, we can do that too. And that's, that's really all I, I mean, be <laughs> just be remembered as a, you know, a solid guy and <laughs> helping, you know, help their neighbor out. And that's really it for me. Well, my friend, you definitely, uh, I think you've definitely done that. You're definitely uh, a big part of history at Franklin Regional. Uh, one final, final question. Yeah. Are, yeah. are we going to see you in any plays at Seton Hill? I mean, what's the acting yeah. career looking like? Uh, <laughs> the acting career is pro probably retired. You know, we're probably hanging up the, hanging it up, but hey, never say never. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to go up to Seton Hill and, you know, con continue what I'm involved in now and, just, you know, hang out with all the guys. Some of the team, some of my uh, future teammates already texted me. You know, they've already congratulated me. I've got like 10 of their numbers, so more than that. And, you know, it's I'm, – I'm, I'm so excited to just get up there and finally meet them all in person and get on campus, you know. I've toured I've – I've been up there and I've toured up there and I saw Coach Stokes and Coach Wilkins a uh, few weeks – like two weeks ago. But just, you know, fine, like to get up there officially, it will be, it'll be so awesome. And if there is a play up there, you never know. Maybe I'll hop in and <laughs> – I'll hop in and, you know, do my thing, hit a few dance moves and try and help out the program. You might have to start having your own cameo, my friend. Uh, start I, I might have, have to. Honestly. Yeah. Start charging people. Start charging people. Well, Finn, it's been a pleasure <laughs> to watch you in a Panther uniform. And uh, we at WSN are very excited to see you in a Griffins uniform next year. Again, thanks so much for stopping by and congratulations again. Of course. And thank you very much. And I'll be seeing you guys soon. I, I know you guys sponsor the years at the games. You film the games. And uh, I'm definitely excited to see you guys. That's Seton Hill men's basketball commit Finn Hutchison. As always, thanks for joining us for another Recruiting Thursday feature brought to you by Sendell Volkswagen in Greensburg. We would love to meet you. Make sure you check out our other Recruiting Thursday features that are available on our YouTube channel. And as always, this is Jack Ridenauer signing off, never saying a goodbye, just a simple see you later right here and only on the Westmoreland Sports Network.